This is Tim, and this is Deconstructing Comics. Welcome to Deconstructing Comics. This is Tim in Tokyo. This week, we're talking to a couple of web cartoonists we've heard from before, but I've asked both of them to choose someone else's webcomic that they enjoy. First, we'll hear from Japan resident Victor Edison, creator of the diary comic Life in Japan, on Chris Carlier's Little in Japan, a somewhat less autobiographical work that still draws heavily on real life, but with excellent story structure and some great comic moments. Then Monster Pop creator Maya Kern is back to talk about GGDG's beautifully drawn RPG-type comic Cucumber Quest. Victor Edison in a moment. First, a reminder that you can help this podcast by making your Amazon purchases via deconstructingcomics.com slash Amazon and make that your bookmark for future purchases. We'll then get a percentage of what you spend. It costs you nothing extra and helps us cover web hosting and other costs of presenting this show every week. Okay, I'm talking to Victor Edison here in Japan. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Yourself? Okay. Yeah, so if we've, I think, I talked to you once, I think, for a regular kind of talk for the podcast at some point. I'll put the link in the I show notes. Did we? we've ever actually... Talked on oh, the no, I think what I'm thinking of is M- Mulele and I reviewed your comic. That's right. Yeah, I sent a comic for you guys to, to review. Um, yeah, Life in Japan. Um, yeah. But then, of course, we've talked to you at uh, Kai Guy, and I think you were at Cat also. That's right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've so, seen you two or three times at those things, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, two or three at least. Anyway, so um, now, so I asked you to recommend another webcomic and mm-hmm. tell us about what you chose. Okay, so I, I chose a webcomic called Little in Japan. I actually got a, a copy, a printed copy off in here on Amazon. But uh, I originally found this as a webcomic. I think it's by, I'm going to butcher the poor guy's name, uh, Chris Carlier. Uh, C- yeah, I remember I asked him about it because he, he was at CAT and at, uh, at Kai Guy this past year. And I th- think he kind of vacillated himself on if it was Carlier or Carlier, but... Okay, that, that yeah, Carl, Carlier, Carly, Carlier. There's an R in the end, C A R L I E R. Yeah, so, and I think he's a a British guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and like it says, so that's yeah, it's called Little in Japan. And uh, I guess I found it because um, at the time I was doing my own, or I wanted to start doing my own comic, and I was thinking of calling it Big in Japan. And I typed that into a Google search to see if somebody had done that, and can't remember why I and potentially chose a different name, but anyway, his, his, uh, little in Japan came up, uh, and I, I clicked on it and, uh, started to read it and it was really, really good. Um, so, hmm. So, um, what, what, uh, in particular did you find good about it? Uh, I guess what, what grabbed me at first is it's, it's about, a uh, an English teacher in Japan, which is, is something I'm really familiar with. Hit ho- hits That's, home. Yeah. <laughs> it's my day job. So, uh, I started reading it from that perspective, and uh, it's it's really true. You know what I mean? Like it, it's uh, a lot of the situations he's in and 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 whatnot are, are really uh, similar. I've had similar experiences, I guess. Um, so it's interesting from that perspective. But also his uh, sense of humor is is really good. It's, it was really really funny. Um, mm-hmm. I found myself laughing out loud and and whatnot. So. Yeah, there's not a lot of it on his site on littleinjapan.com. There are like five short stories there. Um, I think it's all. I was looking at it right before, uh, just a couple of minutes ago, and it it looks like it's all there, but it's it's. Hold on, let me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I on the right side, or sorry, the left side. There's a little section that says right. late, latest comics, and there are five comics there. I. Yeah, couldn't find anything else hiding in the blog, but so that's yeah, it's tricky because it is it's hiding in there. So if if you go to uh, let's see, click it on there, and yeah, if you click on Little in Japan, if you put littleinjapan dot com, um, it'll take you to the latest post, and he's got the latest one stuck up there, which unfortunately is the end of the book. So 
if you go there, you're going to read the last chapter, which is that's unfortunate. <laughs> but right, right before the header, um, there's a thing that says first, previous, comments, random, next, and last. Um, just in, in the center of the, the screen. Mm-hmm. Right? You, the, the thing you're talking about is on the left. Right. This is right in the yes. center before the, the actual yeah. comic. Right. It's on the left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so if you hit first, uh, it takes you to a comic you did in 2011. Um, uh, yeah, which, Fresh Blood. Yeah, and that's that's actually, I was looking at, it, it's actually the, the second chapter in his book. Hmm. And he used to have the first one up there, so I'm wondering, why, maybe he did them out of order or something. But, hmm. see, end yeah. of the not sure what the deal is, but yeah, yeah. Going through, clicking next, I'm getting yeah those those same. Oh, you know what though? You're right. Yeah, he, he it, whatever else he had there, he must have taken down. But okay, yeah, you're right. You're right because the first one is on there. Huh? Yeah, but, you're right. Okay. But yeah, but at least reading those five, I, I got a pretty good sense of uh, of what it was about and and his approach and everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fresh blood, I think, gives you a really good sense. So, unfortunately, you put the last one up there. You, if, you, if he's going to take any of them down, you should take the last, the ending of the book down. Uh, the end of the line? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I felt that they all kind of each work on their own, too. I mean, there maybe there is maybe a little continuity in there, but... Uh... Yeah, no, they, they definitely work on their own. But, again, like you said, there there is definitely a continuity to it, too. He starts off... Uh, at an English school, um, and just goes downhill. Things just keep getting progressively worse and worse and worse for him. Um, and then, well, I don't want to give away the ending, but yeah, yeah, it, it, that's basically the theme. So it, it's fun watching this character just hit bottom, and you think he's at bottom, but he goes a step lower, and he just keeps going down, down, down. <laughs> and I, I mean, the the main character's name is Dave, but I suspect that he's Chris. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but I mean. It, or, I, or in in many ways, anyway. Right. Yeah. No. Because, yeah. Th- again, the situation he find he finds himself in um, are definitely things that happen to people over here. Um, but I don't. I don't think he's this degenerate. Like I think Dave. <laughs> Dave's a. Uh, right. He's he's he goes, he's yeah really similar. But I think Chris has got a little better. Head on his shoulders, but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I'm sure. I mean, the stories are fictional, but based on many things from real oh yeah, life. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you definitely get the. the he knows what he's talking about uh, mm-hmm. when he writes this, and he's he's able to kind of poke fun at both uh, the weird things about Japan and the weird things about foreigners' impressions of Japan. That, yeah, no, that's that's exactly what I thought. What what caught me is because he. Dave's the the character, I guess, has has got a real cynical sense of humor, which is funny, but at the same time, he's he's also kind of an idiot, and and he doesn't realize, you know, that he's causing half the problems and and mm. whatnot. Yeah, you know what I mean? and and so that that's Chris's humor, also, mm-hmm. you know, to, to be able to depict this. But then there's so like that uh, that uh, new teacher who comes in from West Virginia, who who's talking about like you know the, the old kind of. Uh, canard about oh, in japan you can buy women's underwear from a vending machine on any street corner <laughs> yeah well it's, it's great because it's, it's the typical american right so yeah he's, he's this cynical british guy and now he's got this happy-go-lucky roommate who's just a complete idiot and yeah there's <laughs> tons of lots i make a good comedy team those two um but he um one of the really strong points about it is that he has a i mean the structure of each story is so good um, yeah, oh, and his writing is top notch. Like, I wish I could write like this. Uh, because he always puts down some point, some idea that he comes back to at the end at a time when you weren't expecting, and it kind of doubles back to it with a nice plot twist. Like, oh, okay, it reemploys that original point or a certain character who appeared earlier um, in an unexpected way. Yeah, no, def- definitely, his his writing is amazing. It it. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to read, and it works on many different levels. So, yeah, I was really really impressed with it. Mm, um, yeah, another another point that he mentioned that uh, 
rang it rang true to me was how like he tries freelance writing and the pay is so bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you doesn't even cover your expenses. I've tried that also. You know, I got paid a little bit more than two thousand five hundred yen, but still like not enough to that you could make a career out of doing that. But just the fact that he, he meets those two foreigners in the bar, right? And he asks, so what do you guys do? And one's like, oh, I'm a DJ. And the other one's like, you know, I'm a photographer. Yeah. Right? And, oh, you know, I wish I could get those kind of jobs. And then you find out later on, no, they're just English teachers. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, I, technically they do those things, but they're not making any money at them. Right, exactly. It'd be like if people walked up to me and said, you know, what do you do in Japan? I'd be, oh, I'm a comic book artist. You know, that's that's not what I do in Japan. I'm, a, I'm an English teacher. But on the side, I, I do the comics. So. Yeah, and I'm a podcaster. Exactly, right? You, just, you know. Raking it, the dollars it, in. Yeah. Mm, yes. So you, you meet, you, but you meet characters like that in real life over here, too. So it's, you yeah, know, it's, it's fun. So, how many pages is is the book? So, I was, I was also writing this down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven chapters here. Hmm. There are anywhere from five pages to ten pages. The book doesn't have page numbers, which would make my job easier. But hmm. you can okay. tell me real quick. I wrote this down. What's three plus nine plus four plus ten plus five plus nine plus four plus nine? <laughs> it's five. Hmm. So that. it's the. The five of those stories are the ones that are on the web. Then, yeah, or... they were all on the web at one point. Uh -huh. I'm reading this um, as it was going along, so uh, yeah, I got into it right right as, as the first one, which I guess is no longer on the web, unfortunately. Hmm. I mean, he'd update it very infrequently. Maybe you know, a month or two would go by, and then he'd put another story up. But the the quality was was, was worth the wait for sure. Yeah, well, the ones that are there were all done, like, like there's one from each year or something. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was looking at that up, too. So he started in 2011, July of 2011, and then it ends in uh, January of 2016. Yeah. And then, yeah, the, the Amazon book's got, like, a prologue and an epilogue, too, which tie it together nicely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can't recommend that enough, enough to anyone who... Enjoys humor, I guess humor comics, um, and has any interest in Japan at all, mm -hmm. or the, the English teacher experience in Japan. Uh, yes. It's definitely a humorous take on that, and, and it was, as well as being true to life. Mm -hmm. um, so how's your own comic coming? Uh, it's coming along. I, I change styles all the time, so I, I just recently started a, a, like a, a brush, using a, a brush and going back to the four panels a day, so... It's kind of killing me right now, but yeah, it's it's fun. It keeps me off the streets, is what <laughs> the line I like to tell people. Hmm. And uh, what point are you? So your comic uh, for people who don't remember, it's a kind of a diary comic ish, right? But, yeah, no, it's it's a it's exactly that. It's a diary comic. Yeah. So, uh, but you you've been running a little behind actual uh, time, and yeah, no, I'm I'm exactly one year behind. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so the the strip that went up today is I don't know what day it is, but yeah. a week and I just lose track of time. It's January fourteenth, yeah. Yeah, so it'd be probably the the fourteenth of two thousand sixteen. Hmm, I see. Hmm. And so you you got it all written down, right? You yeah, no, you're like pulling it all from memory. No, of course. I, I write it I write it down. Um probably like, like when I go into work the first thing I'll do is just write down what happened the next day or you know, I skip days or what whatnot, but um, I write down what's been going on um, in a little diary, just two or three, four lines, whatever, and then uh, forget about it until I have to actually do the strips. And the strips I do in maybe two, two week chunks. I'll just bang them out as fast as I can. Mm, I see. And you're, I think I don't know if you were recording it before we were talking about trying to find new web comics and how there's just so if you find one. There's just so much to read, and you're saying they update two, three times a week. Yeah, and you, I like um, Maya pointed me to this other comic that started in 2011, <laughs> and I'm kind of grinding through it. But yeah, so that's that's the problem with my comic is I also started in 2011, and I update every day. So there's you know there's tons of tons of stuff to get through, and if you don't, if you're not, I don't. Uh, 
it's not like Chris's comic. Like Chris, like you're saying, he tells a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mine's just a straight diary. What happened that day? So if you you come into the middle of it, it, it it's like who cares? It's you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. He rode his bike around the neighborhood. Like wow. But it, yeah, it, mm. I do it for myself more than for anybody else. So. Yeah, but there, yeah. There's such a proliferation of web comics out there. The... <laughs> So uh, also, I wanted to ask you when we were talking about that: is is do you have a site that you go to? Um, to to the, I guess I mean, do you know any websites that cover web comics? Well, that, like, I mean, there there web comics. There are quite a few, I think, or several, I think that that are still floating around where people can kind of put their web comic in, and there's kind of a ranking. People vote and stuff. I, I'm not sure if there's as much of that now as there once was. When I was doing my own webcomic, which is still available on timyoungonline.com if people want to look at it. Oh, I'll definitely check um, that out. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, my podcasting career ended my comics career because <laughs> I don't have enough time to do both. But uh, I used to have it on on top web comics, but mine was like at the bottom of top web comics because nobody was reading. <laughs> yeah, and nobody I mean, was voting for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I need, if I'm looking for podcast fodder, and I'm thinking, oh, web comics, so maybe I, I just like type in web comics or best web comics or something on Google, and usually, like, there are a bunch of articles about you know the best web comics of whatever year or you know, you know twenty five web comics you should read now or something. Um, so, but. Also, well, like Maya, I found her, I believe, on Tapastic. Okay. Um, which, uh, what? Um, Chris Taylor, uh, Sketchfro, I don't know that he's still doing his comic, but he was using Tapastic. Okay. Um, putting his comic up there. Uh, and there's another the, Japanese webcomic, um, Texan in Tokyo, I think. Yeah, and I, um... I think she she mentioned in another blog, I think, that she, she updates on, I think it's Taptastic as well. Yeah, I, she's been on the podcast once. She was part of a group discussion, but she okay. doesn't really, she doesn't live in Tokyo, so it's a little hard to meet her in person, but... Yeah. But yeah, she's, her, her comic is, uh, what is her name? I'm blanking on her name, but... Uh, Grace, I think. Grace. Grace, yeah. Something Grace me not. Um... Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, she's, she's somewhere close to living the dream. I think she's actually making some money from it. Yeah. I I think a lot of that too is with uh, YouTube. Like I think, again, I don't. Right. Yeah. She and her husband are doing some YouTube stuff. They were doing YouTube and and whatnot. But I I think I follow them on Facebook. So sometimes I'll get updates. I think they stopped though. I think they they pulled the plug. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Mineta is her last name. Mineta, M-I-N-E-T-A. Yeah, looking at her site, I I don't see anything after last November. Oh yeah, the end. She says, the last right. post. Um, hmm. Okay, I wonder what she's doing now. Uh, she, uh, she says uh, they want to have a family, so right. I guess they can't do the, the the business and have kids. So, well, I think she wrote, she wrote something that's that got me thinking. Well, is uh, she wanted? I, I'm. This is just all assumptions, right? But if she's gonna have a family, then she she wants to protect her kids' privacy, right? She doesn't want to put them out there. Mm. And that's that's kind of the opposite of what I'm doing. I'm using a, an alias, of course, but you know, my kids feature a lot in. in uh. <laughs> I sometimes wonder about that. If that's such a good, uh, good idea or a good thing, you know what I mean? If I was a, I might just imagine myself in, in junior high and having, you know, my whole life. Being out there, you know, I would I would not be happy about that. Hmm. So. Yeah, I see what I see what you're talking about here. Um, I realize I can't keep following the why I got into YouTube blogging and still think about the future I want with a family and kids, which I know might seem like a really odd reason to walk away. But here's the thing: children can't consent, or at least not really. And I think it's unfair to document someone's life without their permission. And kids, especially babies can't give you that kind of consent because they're too tiny to fully understand the implications of what happens when your life is documented online. Okay. 
right? So I, I read that, and that gave me a real pause because you know that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm documenting, documenting uh, my life, but also my my children's mm. uh, life as well. They're, you know, they're not at an age where they can uh, consent to that. So. Mm. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, doing it on YouTube is one thing, and doing it as a comic would seem to be something else. I would think. Um, depending on how, on how much information the comic gives away about, you know, actual name and appearance and and all things, you know. Yeah, no, know. it's 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 a little tricky. It's a it's all uh, like I say, I'm using an alias and whatnot, but uh, like you, my wife put out a comic in, under another name, and, and you guessed right away that who it was. So oh well, yeah, uh, Muleli knew. I had no idea, but so <laughs> yeah, so it's it's not as as private i think um, as i like but also yeah that is a good point is um the the version of the child that appears in my comic is my drawing of him it's it's not like on youtube where he would be himself you'd be actually seeing him acting like a, a kid you know what i mean mm. Does that make any sense so i guess there there's a level of distance there mm -hmm. but yeah so uh thanks for this and i guess i'll be seeing you at cat or kai guy or yeah something. i'll i'll be there again for sure <laughs> I yeah. did. I had no idea that you uh, did a webcomic as well, so I'm definitely going to go check that out. Yeah, I was doing. I mean, the, the story never ended. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, what's on, what's on the web there is not... I, I never put the beginning up either. Um, so I, I don't know if, if recent podcast listeners know anything about this, because I never talk about it anymore. But uh, I did a comic called The Crazing Spider Hag. Uh -huh. um, and this was something that I started when I was in junior high. Okay. Um, about it's it started out as kind of a what if story of what if Aunt May got bitten by the radioactive spider. <laughs> um, but it was also done, you know, in, as a parody comic. Yeah. Um, you know, similar to the not brand Eck of the '60s, um, which I, we didn't. Re my brother and I didn't realize as kids was actually just copied from early Mad Magazine when it was a comic book. Okay. <laughs> the same, the same kind of style, but uh, but it started out as that, and then it kind of went uh, how, in several di different directions at once. How, how many years did you did you do it? Well, I did it through high school. Didn't do anything while I was in college. Did it uh, some after graduation. Then came to Japan and didn't do anything for over a decade. Um, and then I got back into doing it around 2003. And then I was doing it once or twice a week on the web until 2006. Wow. Um, and well, I, I, in 2007, I did one page, and then I haven't <laughs> haven't touched it since then. Yeah, those those ideas you come with in high school are great, though. I think my friends and I used to do a, a comic strip about. Uh, do you know the band U2? Oh yeah, they had a, a song when I was in high school uh, off a of zero called "The Wanderer," which was uh, Johnny Cash singing. Uh, in oh back. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did cartoons with The Wanderer as like Johnny Cash, and then his backing. You know, four friends, which were the U2 guys, and they'd go around and fight evil and <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. So, but that's interesting. So you you stopped your your web comic to do the podcast. So you find more satisfaction, I guess, or, or uh, I guess, yeah, satisfaction doing the podcast. Is it that than you got doing the comic? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure if it was satisfaction as much as well. Part of the problem was that was just time. Yeah. Um, I didn't have time to do everything. I was doing English study podcasts too, which I'm still doing. Yeah. Um, so doing two shows a week was starting to kind of eat up my time. And then, like I said, it took me a year to do that last page in 2007. And by that time, I looking at my, my scribbled story notes, I couldn't make sense of it anymore. I couldn't figure out what happened next. <laughs> and then I just never got back to it. I didn't have didn't have any more time. Okay. Um, but I don't know. One, I'd like to do a comic again. Um, yeah, I I enjoy. Them. But I understand too with the time thing too. Like that's that's why I'm a year behind. Is I just got fed up when I was just wasn't getting any joy out of it anymore. And just, mm. 
to put this down. I thought I was going to quit forever, but I you know, got bored after six months, and I want to do this again, so started it back up. <laughs> yeah, it's nice nice to have some kind of creative outlet. Yeah, but at the same time, you get so so caught up in doing it that you don't you you know like, I don't know how to put. This. I'm inarticulate in English now. You, you're putting out so much that you're not taking stuff in. Like I have no time to read comic books anymore. Uh, or, you know, or, you know so yes, not even comic books, but just books and, and TV and entertainment and whatnot. Yeah, I I can't understand how the I fanboy podcast guys have enough time to watch any any TV shows or movies. I'm like, where do you guys find this time? I mean, you know, they complain they don't have enough time, but they take in a lot more media than I do. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I, it's their job. Maybe they are, really are living the dream, though. I mean, if, if <laughs> just doing comic books was my job, I could, I would have time to, to do other things. But, I, you know, I've got to, to work a real job in the day and then mm-hmm. the comics in the evening while also having a family and, and whatnot, too. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to, I guess, uh, say that, yeah, I, no, I, I enjoy your podcast a lot, though, because uh, it's a side of the comic industry and whatnot that I don't. Usually, mm. see, mm. a, a side in what sense? Just uh, I guess uh, underground or off the beaten path. I think uh, yeah. not uh, so not so mainstream. Stuff, yeah, I agree. You know. yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes, occasionally, we'll do Marvel or DC stuff, but yeah, a lot of the, most of the time, it's manga or some indie stuff or or web comics or whatever. Yeah, can I make a suggestion? Hmm. Because you've got great content, like you have a, a, a Tom Spurgeon interview that was really good, and you've, you've got big names too. Like uh, I'm blanking right now, but he did Craig Thompson. Did you? Yeah, Craig, Craig Thompson, Thompson was on. You've got some great stuff up there, but it's hard. It's hard to find the the stuff because it's it's all in. Uh, actually, I'm not talking. I should have prepared. This. <laughs> it's all it's all in order the order that you did it right. There's no like. Is there a search function? Or, um. There some, is there is a little search field at the top. Something on the side, you know, that you put just put all the big names of people that you've interviewed and stuff, and that that make it easier to hmm. find. Or in, if you search, you know, if you search uh, Craig Thompson interview, then maybe it would, it would come up. Cause, right? Yeah. You, if if people thought if people knew what they were looking for, that's the thing. I mean, the, I don't know if there's a way to to point out on the homepage, you know, all of the, the people that I've talked to, but I mean, if, if you type Craig Thompson in there, um, the, the talk would come up and probably are, well, I, I have, I have the same name. complaint, I guess, for Tom, Tom Spurgeon's site too, because I read the comics reporter as well. And uh. he does great interviews and he has great reviews, but it's just no way to, I guess, you know, they just, as soon as the day's over, it scrolls down and then it's gone. <laughs> yes, it's, it's got to be a, got to be. A hmm. Yeah. Well, I I've been wanting to redo the site, but I, I don't have time for that either. No, that's yeah. That's I have the same problem. <laughs> you know, I, I need to redo the site, but I no time. Yeah. Chris Carlier's comic is at littleinjapan.com. Victor Edison's comic is at lifeinjapan-comic.blogspot.com. Coming up, Maya Kern on GGDG's Cucumber Quest, and the trials and tribulations of being a webcomics artist. But first, if you value the content on deconstructing comics, critiquing comics, and to the bat poles, and want to help us move up to bigger and better things, how about donating a few bucks a month via Patreon at patreon.com slash deconcomics. If everyone listening gave just $3 a month, it would make a big difference. We'd be able to reach several of our Patreon goals and bring you more content, including bringing back over 120 early episodes that have long been missing from our website. Check out all our goals and rewards and make your pledge at patreon.com slash deconcomics. Or you can make a one-time donation via PayPal. Send it to donate at deconstructingcomics.com. This is an imaginary podcast, which may never have happened. The Shortbox Showcase. But then again may have. About a father and daughter. I'm Professor Allen. And I'm Emily. Who came from Ohio and talked about comics. Walking Dead, 
Tintin. Black Lightning. White Tiger. It tells of their rise to glory, when the great guests were yet to be booked. Let's put it this way, Shogun Warriors wasn't going to win any Eisners. And the great feats of editing, not yet performed. And this is Ultra 7, this is Ultraman Jack, and this is Ultraman Taro, and this is Ultraman Leo, and this is Ultra- Of how they spoke at length. This continuity is really the brainchild of nitpicking nerds the world over. But to be fair, the best kind of confession is the Force Confession. And reviewed in brief tales that explore creatively the bounds of a given character's history. Red Sun is wonderful with a very strange ending. Of brilliant creators before their fall from grace. This is the era where Miller is at the height of his creative and artistic powers. And the ability of strong writing to encapsulate and transcend its time. Flash of Two Earths by Gardner Fox. This is an imaginary podcast. Aren't they all? Shortbox Showcase is part of the Relatively Geeky family of podcasts. Check us out on the web at relativelygeekypodcast.blogspot.com or search in iTunes for Relatively Geeky or Shortbox Showcase. And remember, we're not experts. We're just family. All right, now I'm talking with uh, Maya Kern in Minneapolis. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Okay. Yeah, welcome back to the show. Thank you. And uh, uh, this time we're talking about someone else's webcomic. Uh, well, um, yeah, so this is called Cucumber Quest, and tell us about this. So uh, Cucumber Quest is a very adorable sort of like RPG-inspired webcomic by Gigi DG. Um it's been running for, I guess, six years now, mm. um, something like that. Yeah, 2011 it started. Okay. And I, I got like the first chapter read back in 2011 <laughs> when she was putting up like t- two or three times a week, it looks like, back then. So yeah. I, I didn't well, get out of 2011. Well, she only updates like once a week now, but I think she mm. updates like a couple pages at, at a time. Ah, uh, okay. Um, but it's basically, you know, it was good from the very beginning, and it's just gotten even better. Like, um, just the art is adorable. Oh yeah, it's be- beautiful stuff. Uh, yeah, her her sense of color is impeccable, and it's just really sweet and charming. And it has this real like innocent sense of humor to it. That's very like eyes open. Just just charming like the whole comic is just really charming um ggdg is a huge fan of like nintendo products especially like uh the paper mario uh games which i'm also a huge fan of and you can really tell in her writing uh how much she loves those games because like the special thing that i mean a lot of like mario games do but especially like paper mario is they really like poke fun at the genre while still playing the genre and she does that a lot. Mm, okay. Sort of making fun of it out of love or something. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> like still uh, simultaneously going with and against the tropes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's really sweet. And every single character is just incredibly endearing. Um, even the ones who are supposed to be bad. Like, <laughs> they're all great. Um, and I think that's uh, something she pulls off really well. Yes. Yeah, so um, the main characters are these kind of well, they're they're they have rabbit ears. They don't really yeah. look like rabbits otherwise. They yeah, are well, referred to as rabbit, rabbit people, but yeah, they're little ra- rabbit people. Um, and everything's like food and sweets that were like from uh, their kingdom. At least there's a bunch of different themed kingdoms too. Um, they're in a wintry, cold place right now, so they have little uh, ear. Um, cozies on the top of their little ears and it's really cute. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's just great. Um, I noticed, so the, um, th- the first chapter that I managed to read, um, the main character, Cucumber, t- titular character, um, mm-hmm. is sort of told by his father and kind of his mother too, to go on this quest and he doesn't really want to he doesn't want to be a quote-unquote legendary hero and his sister almond is much more interested in it and he tries to tell other people that and 
people kind of disparage that. There's no such thing as a little sister legendary hero. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, she manages to catch up with him anyway. And I, I felt like there was a bit of a of a feminist current to that. Like, you know, why not? Why not have a little yeah. sister uh, legendary hero? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious, especially like in later um, bits with uh, Gigi Digi's writing. Um, you know, she has like gay couples and it's very um, like... Uh, <laughs> progressive main, yeah well um like it doesn't like hit you over the head with it i think at least because i kind of do that <laughs> <laughs> i hit people over the head with that i'm like if you're not here for like uh my queer feminist perspective then i'm sorry but you're not gonna like my comic uh, <laughs> she's a little more subtle with it than i am Okay, um, well, from my memory of Monster Pop, I don't think it was too bad that, as far as hitting people over the head. It just seemed kind of natural. Okay, there are gay people here and whatever. Yeah. Well, um, but it's, I don't know, it's just, uh, I think it's great to have something that's kind of all ages, that's also, um, you know, gay people exist and like girls can be heroes and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, cucumber, not no important spoilers, but cucumber just transformed into a magical girl. Uh, and so that's going to be really fun. Um, (laughs) not on purpose, but, uh, he looks really cute. (laughs) Um, sir carrot, uh, got like a magical boy armor recently that was also very cute. <laughs> Everything in it's really cute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and Almond is definitely, she's more of like the traditional like uh, hero type, very like actions before words, using swords is cool. Mm. And uh, Cucumber is very much a reluctant hero. And there's sort of some lore in the comic, not to like get too deep into spoiler regions, but you see um there's you know he's i think like the 99th hero in like this or 99th or 100th hero in like this line of um their family that just keeps on having heroes to defeat the nightmare knight and um when you see some visions of some of the previous heroes um cucumber is very similar to what's usually like the sister in the other i guess like incarnations of this heroic line mm, and all kind of traditional ones yeah so like the more traditional like the uh bit of um incarnations we've seen before um almond was like almost exactly like the boy who's like you know the main character hero guy mm-hmm. and, and cucumber is very much like the sister but for some reason they've been switched and then that's going to change a whole bunch of stuff which is why the comic is about them instead of about you know like the first heroes or whatever. Um, do you know like how she's drawing this? Is this all electronic? Oh. Yeah, I think it's Photoshop. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I just uh. kind of jumped ahead to the most recent ones here, and it, it's only gotten better, it looks like. I oh, mean, it's great oh, yes. at the beginning, but wow. It's gotten even better. Uh, the thing that's happening right now is super duper cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're putting on a stage play. Um it's great. I don't want to say too much about it. It's really funny. Um, I hadn't read it in a couple weeks. And I was like, oh, I should get caught up for, uh, before this podcast. And I was like, there's not that much that could have happened. And like the 15 pages that I read um, today, like I laughed out loud maybe five times. <laughs> so, uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this most recent page. I don't know what's going on, but it's beautiful to look at anyway. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and this kind is of a the... jack o' lantern like guy, kind of dan- maybe he's the guy who's on stage, and but yeah, just a lot of color and and it's really sharp and a lot of action. Yeah, um, it's just God, it's so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't like what can you say about this comic other than that it's just fantastic. Like, um. It just, it makes me smile. Um, and I think that's, that's just the mark of something 
Really good. I mean, I know there's like gritty, dark stuff or whatever that doesn't make you smile. That's really good. But yeah. like when something brightens your day, like that's that's the kind of stuff that sticks with me. And uh, Cucumber Quest always brightens my day. I think for us old guys who grew up with Marvel and DC, um, th- this looks like the kind of comic that would be kind of off-putting. Um, just, you know, because it's kind of manga-influenced, cute-type looking stuff, but I think I would recommend going ahead and, and looking into it anyway, because, uh, you know, I, I laughed a few times just going through the first chapter. There was some funny yeah. stuff in there. Um, if and, you like yeah. Mario, read this comic. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you like, like the more lighthearted, like RPGs, um, if you have a sense of humor, read this comic, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't have a sense of humor, don't read this comic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think no matter where you're coming from, it's it's engaging if you give it a chance. Um, have you had any contact with uh, Gigi DG? Uh, Gigi DG. Gigi um, Gigi DG. Okay. Uh, I don't remember. Um, not really. Hmm. Um, she's just one of those like people. I'm just like, oh god, I'm just. I don't even want to be like part of this. I just want to like watch it from a distance because <laughs> she's just like so good that I'm like, I don't want to like um, ruin the mystery. <laughs> I see. Don't, you don't want to have your illusions blown up. Just you let her be on that pedestal or whatever. Well, I don't <laughs> think my illusions would be blown up. It's just like, the comic's so good. I don't need more than that. Like, uh, I mean, she's really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes you just, you don't need more than that, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I might try to get her on the podcast, though. <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so how did how did you know about this comic? I don't even remember. Like, I started reading it really early on. I think um, it was still in the first chapter when I started reading it. Um, I don't know if I found it myself or if my um, best friend told me about it. Um, Because I can't remember which one of us started reading it first. Mm. Probably her. But (laughs) I can't remember, so I'm not going to say definitively. But she tends to be a pretty good source Mm. of things to read and I'll read maybe one tenth of the stuff that <laughs> she sends me. Mm. Well, I was talking uh, with uh, Victor in the first part of the show about how there are just so many web comics out there and it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to kind of sift through them and find the best ones just because of the sheer volume. Um, yeah. I don't know if you're looking for something to read, like where do you, where do you look online? Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Okay. Um, and my, uh, again, my best friend, um, Mm -hmm. you know, we've been friends for like 12 years now. So typically if she likes something, I'll probably, maybe I'll like it. I don't know. She has some things. I'm like, I can't get into that. Um, so when you say Twitter, you mean you're relying on other people's recommendations? Yeah, usually. Um, or I found, uh, see, I'm, I'm bad. There's a bunch of comics that I read that I'm haven't like touched in like a couple months that I like found just um like years ago Mm. um like Gunner Craig Court's really good but I gotta catch up with that again (laughs) I think I caught up like a month or two ago and now I gotta catch up again yeah Um, it's hard to keep up uh sometimes I'll find stuff just because um God, how did I find Witchy? Which is really good. Ariel's really nice. Um, I think it was recommended by Topastic's algorithm. And then I was like, oh, this person reads my comic. Maybe I'll read this comic. And I was like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get so busy reading all the good web comics, you don't have time to make your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So now I know as we're recording this, and this is coming out tomorrow, so go ahead and talk about it. You've got a Kickstarter going on. Yeah, um, so it's a Kickstarter for Volume 2 of Monster Pop. It's 
Like the first volume, it's eight and a half by 11. Unlike the first volume, it is 144 pages, which is about double the length of the first volume. Mm. Um, we're, we about a third of the way funded right now and, um, about a week into the campaign. Um, mm, cool. Fun, funny story with that. Um, uh, <laughs> we submitted the Kickstarter for approval a week ago. And usually with Kickstarter, there's a process of you submit it for approval. It takes one to three days to get approved. And then they're like, okay, you're approved. You can like publish this whenever, We submitted it for approval, and it was immediately published. (laughs) We weren't planning to launch it for another week. Mm. Um, So we were totally blindsided. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Completely, like, like we had everything ready. Mm. um, But I wanted a little bit of peace of mind before the Kickstarter went up, you know? Yeah. (laughs) I wanted, like, a week to make, like some more like promo images and to work on some stuff that wasn't Kickstarter related so that I could have a life for a little while. (laughs) And now every single day I'm just like staring at this website, like (laughs) in stress while my fiance tries to like calm me down and be like, it'll be okay. I'm like, you don't know me. (laughs) You don't know the future. How, how long is your campaign? Oh, it's a month. A month. Okay. So you're a week into the month. So. Yeah, hmm. got 22 days to go is what Kickstarter is telling me. Okay. Well, yeah, if you're third of the way to your goal, that sounds like a good start. Yeah, I don't know. What if um, What if everything falls apart? Okay, I should also say, the day that the um, Kickstarter went up, also I was updating the Monster Pop site to uh, be like, hey, the Kickstarter is live somehow. Um, <laughs> And my whole site crashed. <laughs> oh, no. And it took, um, like, two, three, or four days, something like that, to get it back up again. Because what happened was, uh, like, the PHP that my host uses, like, updated, and it didn't like my old PHP. So we had to go through, like, line by line through everything <sighs> and, like, fix stuff. And it was a real pain in the butt. And yeah. it took us about four hours total uh, me and a very kind fan Mm. (laughs) helping me because i don't um i don't know php Mm. and uh we got it done but it was an ordeal i see wow it's definitely not how i wanted that to start (laughs) no (laughs) campaign goes up a week early and the site crashes same day yikes (laughs) best thing Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, well, good luck with the Kickstarter. Thank you. Um, yeah. And uh, with everything else, um, thanks for being on again. Yeah, no problem. I hope this episode turns out good. Yeah. Well, it's been a kind of last minute thing putting this together. But <laughs> I know how that is. Because I, as I was telling Maya before before we started recording, um, the first plan and second plan for this week's episode fell through. So, um, third plan is coming through uh, on a very very tight schedule here. So. <laughs> But uh, I guess webcomic people and podcast people both have these kinds of crises. <laughs> yep. That's great. GGDG's Cucumber Quest is at cucumber.giggidigi.com. Maya Kern's comic is at www.monsterpop.mayakern.com. Write us at mail at deconstructingcomics.com or look us up on Patreon, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and YouTube. All our social media links can be found on the right sidebar at deconstructingcomics.com. Also, please give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Our theme is from bensound.com. If you're looking for some constructive feedback on your comic, send it to us and Mulele and I will critique it on our spinoff podcast, Critiquing Comics. Send it to mail at deconstructingcomics.com and please try to keep it to about 30 pages. Last Thursday, right here in this podcast feed, Mulele and I talked about a comic that baffled us, Geladaz Yiffing in Hell. 
This coming Thursday on To The Bat Poles, Paul and I talk about one of the arcs that has stuck with us most vividly all these years, the Zodiac Crimes. Joker, Penguin, the Parachute Pickup Service, this one has it all. What were the highlights of this arc when we were kids, and how have our impressions changed now? Look up To The Bat Poles wherever you find your podcasts, or at tothebatpoles.libsyn.com. Next week on this show, well, I said this last week, but I think we'll have Emmett Okuna interviewing Neil Curtis from the University of Auckland in New Zealand. Recently at the Australian Centre for the Moving Image in Melbourne, Neil presented the paper Captain America, Patriotism, Nationalism, Fascism. So Emmett will be talking with him about that next week, I think. Till then, this is Tim, and thanks for listening to Deconstructing Comics. Thank you.